Hey, what's up Street Gods? Eric from the Eric from Street Photography Blog. So I want to share with you some practical ideas on photography, street photography, and life in general. So the first thing I want to share with you is kind of realizing that photography is essentially visual street photography and vice versa. So what I mean by that is this. So essentially as a photographer and a street photographer, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make some sort of cultural commentary about society and the world around you. I don't think it's just about making photos that get a bunch of likes on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, but it's really to kind of make a change, to make a social statement, to share your observations about what you have about society and to critique it and to uncover what you consider unjust, what you consider beautiful, and what you encourage other people to notice. So the reason why I think this is very important is that ultimately as a photographer and a human being, moral of the story, you're gonna die. So in lieu of death, knowing that we're gonna die, how can you stay inspired as a photographer to do something with your photography that's meaningful? My practical suggestion is to make a photography project which will leave your stamp on society that could at least change the way people think about the world around you. So, for example, I don't necessarily think when it comes to morals and ethics there's an ultimate right or wrong, philosophically. If you study genealogy of morals by Nietzsche, you figure out that a lot of the, the morals we're given is trained by us. And so ultimately with all art and philosophy and everything you do, it just comes down to your opinion. It comes down to the way you see the world. But I do think that your ideas, your opinion, your thoughts about the world is valuable and important. And I think it's your duty as an artist, philosopher, photographer, visual, sociologist, whatever, to share that perspective with the rest of the world. So for example, the war photographer Philip Jones Griffith, he dedicated his life to document the Vietnam War and to document injustice as well as beauty all around the world. And even though now he's dead, like, you know, people like me could get inspiration from him. And so therefore, even though he's dead, his spirit lives on. And I think that's actually the cool thing with photography is that your spirit, your ethos, and your attitude could live on through your photography. And I've been thinking a lot about like Facebook, social media, photography, and visual images in general. It's like, why are they valuable? Why are they important? What worth do they have? And this is why I've kind of come to discover is, ideally, okay, so obviously your photography or your projects aren't gonna live for on forever, but I think it is a nice pursuit to try to make your photos last as long as they can. So I think your goal should be as a visual artist is not to make a work of art that lasts forever, but something that could last as long as you could make it, which means thinking about photography. Generally speaking, in terms of photography, things that live on longer in photography are photography books and projects because they have some sort of cohesion and they give you a stronger sense of mood and a stronger sense of story and could leave a stronger impact. So generally speaking, photography print books work the best because photography print books have the power of existing without the internet. So what that means is, you know, even though there is an EMP blast that goes through the states, we still are going to be able to access the photos because you know, photography books don't require chargers or internet connections. One big innovation that I've been actually trying to do is publish more PDF ebooks. And the reason why I'm trying to aim to do more PDF ebooks is because with PDF ebooks, I think the PDF format has been around for a really long time. I mean, it's been around since I was a kid. So essentially what that means is that you're more likely to uh, have a PDF file that exists a long time. And it's an open format. I mean, pretty open. I mean, Adobe still owns it. Sorry, it's kind of loud in here. We are in Cyclone after all. So the great thing about the PDF format is that the PDF format will last a really long time. So let's say you're 
you can't afford to print your own book. The awesome thing is to realize that you have all these digital tools to make your own photography ebook, PDF book. And there's many benefits of having a PDF ebook. All right, so some of the benefits of a PDF ebook include the fact that, I mean, A, it's free, B, it could be infinitely, it could be infinitely replicable. And it's kind of cool because you think about it, files could be copied infinitely and accessed infinitely. So it's essentially the ultimate form of immortality in a sense so that's that's a good thing um also the cool thing with pdf books you could you know change the formatting you could change the layout you could essentially change the sequencing of images whereas with social media facebook instagram blah blah not not really and it doesn't really matter whether you have a lot of technological experience or not the simplest solution is i've i found to just use the ibooks author tool on a mac so I think that the iBooks author tool, you know, being able to use it on a Mac, that alone is the worth the price of just buying a Mac, whether it be a MacBook or a Mac mini or refurbished, whatever it may be. It doesn't really matter what kind of uh, Mac you get, as long as you have access to the digital tools. So my practical suggestion is, if you want to work on a more meaningful project, which will last, I'll last you, try to do it as a photography, PDF ebook, especially if you know you don't have a publishing deal or if you don't want to self-publish a print book because it tends to be a lot more expensive. And also other things I've been doing, which is I think pretty innovative, is I designed the whole book on the iBooks author tool and I used Adobe Acrobat. And I exported the PDF all into single JPEG images and then I shared that on Facebook and my blog and other places. So it kind of gives other people the chance to experience the photos in different uh, novel ways. So yeah, so long story short, my suggestion is realize that photography and street photography is essentially visual sociology. You're making commentary about society, life in general. You're gonna make an impact through your photos through the overall feeling and themes you're trying to put through your photos. And yeah, essentially have faith that you are an artist, have faith that you are a philosopher with an opinion, you're a visual poet, and you're destined to do dope stuff, right? So for more info, just Google Air Kim blog and see more info there. Peace out.